Impala Films presents Haunted, the audio drama. Season 2, Episode 5. Presque Fu. Part 2 of 4. Written by Benton Hodges. Baker speaking. Baker? Wait, Lucy? Dan! Oh my god, how are ya? I'm good, thank you. Yourself? Well, I'm on records in the graveyard shift, so you tell me. Ah, uh, you tell another CO to do one. In fairness, this one had it coming. <laughs> they always do. As Greenvale, I heard about the craziness. <laughs> Couldn't Adam and Eve it? Adam and Cockney rhyming. I was still trying to make that happen, eh? Cockney roots. So, what happened in Greenvale? Chaos. Pure and simple. I'll have to tell you sometime. Next time you're in London, let me know. I will do. So, how can I help? Yeah, you're going to hate me. I need some files. Old ones. Uh, last I heard, you were on administrative leave. Well, I just thought, while I was rotting away off duty, I'd try and solve some cold cases. Fair enough. What? Fair enough. Seriously? Cockney is coming back. Deal with it. And what do you need? I'll have a butcher's. A car crash. The Hunter car crash. Do you have a year? Within the last 30. There was an article written, but the woman working at the Gazette isn't responding to me. From what I know... Two fatalities, and the surviving child is called James Hunter. Sorry to make you sift through all the old files. Oh, don't chicken curry. I've digitised like the last 80 years. OK, you made that one up. Chicken curry? Worry? You need to teach me that sometimes. Bobby Moore? Is that...? Sure. How do you not get it? It's basically another language. It's rhyming. You learnt it at four. I'm willing to wager that no one in your family uses rhyming slang as much as you. Got a house to let? Bet. Well done. Thank you. Circling back, how on earth did you digitise the files? That must have taken months. I've been down here a while. Jesus, Lucy. You ever hear about playing the game? Well, not all of us were perfect cadets and teachers' pets. Fairy snuff. Anything? Uh, a few hunter car crashes in the last 30 years. A few? Seems like it's a common surname. Wonderful. Any with double fatalities? The child would have been taken into the care of the NSPCC. Mm, the only match I can find wasn't 30 years ago. It was in 1963. Thomas and Clara Hunter. Their son, James, was declared missing shortly after. No NSPCC. Did the first responders suspect foul play? No. Nope. Ruled as an accident. No sign of sabotage. Right. Uh, could you send me everything you have on that? That's really it, to be fair. <sighs> OK. One last thing while I have you. Do you have anything on Eliza Wu? Early to mid-twenties, IC5? Any idea what the file would be for? <sighs> Maybe a suit or a caution for impersonating press? No. Nope. Can I know what this is about? Uh, it's, it's just a dead end. Don't worry about it. Thank you, Lucy. No problem. What are you up to on your leave? Well, I'm about to do 12 pints on a paranormal pub crawl, so wish me luck. Since our departure from Dunwich the night before, we had begun the crawl along the ley line and had so far completed two pubs the old garrison and the walnut tree. In between stops we decided to take a look at the farm renowned for supplying these paranormal brews. It was nothing particularly special, a grouping of wheat and barley plots spaced around a statue in one of each clock direction. The statue in the centre was of a young girl wreathed in foliage. In one hand she held a bowl, 
her offerings dripping small droplets of viscera into the soil below. In the other, she held a bunch of wind chimes, tinkling noisily in the spring breeze. So this field has a lot of historical significance. The Romans called it Argenti Tempus Messus. The silver time of the harvest. Something like that. Druids grew things on it before, but were driven away by the Romans. Suddenly the land went from bountiful to barren. With starvation on the horizon, one man sought out the Druids and asked why everything had gone bad. And he found out that it was because they weren't keeping it happy. The Genius loci. Oh, of course. Wow, ahead of the curve, guys. Yes. I'm just glad we all know what a genius loci is so I don't have to explain it. Ahem. <clears throat> you alright, Dan? Hay fever acting up? What is a genius locust? Oh my god, Dan. You don't know what a genius loci is. Gosh, what do they teach at school? Seriously? I just don't know how a 25-year-old man can go this far in life without knowing what a genius loci is. Oh, you're right, guys. Sometimes I just don't know how I pick myself up in the morning not knowing what a genius locust is. Loci. Will you fuck off? There it is. Dan, you can't swear at the birthday boy. Oh, great and wise masters, please inform me, what is a genius loci? Well, because you asked so nicely, it's a nature spirit that protects a location. They make monthly offerings to the statue here and get this. The crops are always on time. They're always disease-free and the farmers swear that the crop yield is always more than the year before. Then it must be a nature spirit. It definitely isn't modern agricultural techniques, pesticides, soil mineral maintenance through crop rotation, and of course some good old-fashioned luck. Must be a genius loci. Yeah, Abigail. Should it, genius locust. Now, was there anything else to see in this field beside a statue of a girl? Uh, Well, if you'd let me finish the story, then you'd see the significance. You see, that field is in the shape of a clock. Yes, it hadn't been lost on me. Well, the legend goes that the field on each clock hand is taken and sent to a different pub or tavern along the ley line. And if you finish them all, you go back in time. You go back in time. Pray tell how exactly one goes back in time from drinking. Well, it's... it's like... Magic, innit? I just don't see how crops and ley lines would transport us back in time. Does it specify when? Roman? Pre-Roman? Last Tuesday? What happened last Tuesday? Nothing. That's my point. The only time-altering property that beer will have will be us losing a few hours from the next morning. It's deeply linked to spirituality through the ley lines. It will likely transport us back to some important moment that altered our spirits. Abigail, ley lines are just straight lines drawn between historical structures. They mean exceedingly little. Do they always argue this much? Depends on who's right, to be fair. Tulpas, vampires, telekinetic kids, werefoxes and psychic prisms, but you draw the line at ley lines. Werefoxes? Seriously? Don't be so dismissive, deputy. Abigail here was one moonlit walk away from shacking up with him. And then being killed. Abigail? Okay, hold up. Ray was clearly using some weird fey magic. And there was the signal. And... An Irish ginger with a book of stolen poetry. Oh, Abigail, your eyes shine like sapphires. Shall I compare ye to a summer's rose? He was oversimplifying it. Hmm. A ginger. Really? (sighs) Might as well make an offering while I'm here. Hope you don't mind processed food. I couldn't really get lamb guts. Hello? Oh my god. No, 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 wait, keep going! Wait, what? sake. Aha! I got it. I must have. Guys! Guys! Guys, I heard something. Again? Yes, Mum, but I recorded it this time. Listen.
Fantastic cinematography there, Roger Deakins, but I'd pay for a good boom guy next time. What do you think you heard? I didn't think anything. I did hear it. It was singing happy birthday. Oh, isn't that nice? The genius loci wanted to wish me a happy birthday. Remind me to drop them some sausages next time I'm here. They said happy birthday, Abigail, and the voice said 21, they grow up too fast. That... That is some prime narcissism there, Abigail. Hearing voices wishing you happy birthday, on my birthday no less. I swear I heard it. And it's closer to my birthday than yours. Well, we missed my birthday because we were busy investigating that school, remember? Now, why don't you tell us somewhere less blustery and cold? Yeah, let's go to stop number three. Yes, let's. You all right, Mum? Yeah, I'm fine. Thank you. Abigail's mini-revelation had seemingly shifted the entire tone of the trip. Whilst Abigail recounted the tale, I spared Cheryl a few glances. She hid it well, but something had certainly shaken her. When she wasn't being looked at, she stared at the frothy pint before her forlornly, the small smile slipping away from her face. And Daniel, perhaps from the revelation that he was playing second fiddle to a ginger poetry enthusiast, seemed cagier than ever. If Abigail realised, she didn't let on. It came on the breeze, like... Like a whisper. And then... Then it was like... A genius loci had certainly upset some turmoil in my own mind. There was a brief moment when I believed that Greenvale had its very own loci. A loci that had been tainted. During the case of the Greenvale stalker, Theo Harper... We found a strange amount of items and locations that had been perfectly preserved for almost 30 years, as if the laws of nature didn't apply to them. This suggested that some strange pocket around Greenvale had been corrupted. It would certainly explain the rushing winds at the treehouse and the town hall, and to a lesser extent, Gus. But where do we draw the line? Nature spirits control harvests? Modern agriculture works because of science. One supernatural occurrence, and suddenly the universe refuses to make any sense. It starts a domino effect that enables the next to fall, and suddenly reality is never the same. At what point will I exist in a world I no longer recognise? James? Hmm? Were you monologuing in your head? That's called thinking, Abigail. Well, what do you think about this? I wasn't listening. Care to refresh me? The bells of Dunwich and now this. Should we try and find Ratman? Because I'm on a roll. Do we risk it with your track record for anthropomorphic werefolk? Ha ha. You know, I never took you for a furry. I'm not a furry! He was a fox! He wasn't a fox then! Being a furry's a slippery slope, Abigail. I once read this news report about this man in a forest at one of those, you know, meetups that they do, and he mistook an actual bear for... I'm not a... Furry. Nice try. Anyway, uh, how's that pint coming, Cheryl? Hmm? Oh, I finished it. I'll grab us some water. Why don't we examine your tastes then, Daniel? I- if you'll excuse me. Uh, give me the cliff notes of this later. Are you alright, Cheryl? I'm fine, thank you. I thought the church frowned on lying. (laughs) Abigail was right. You are very observant. Well, one of us has to be. Lola Bunny? Oh, I knew you'd bring that up. What happened on Abigail's 21st? I promised I'd keep it secret. Why? Who are you protecting? I said she looked pretty once. Now Judy Hopps, on the other hand. I think we should move on to the next pub before we annoy the patrons here. You can trust me, Cheryl. I know. Thank you. Is searching through dark tunnels, four pints down, really the best idea? Ratman may not be real, but muggers certainly are. And that's when Dan flashes the badge. Abigail, you never told me that this work consisted of so many unsavoury places. This is terribly dreary. Oh, that's just South End for you. Did Evie and her friends do all of this nonsense? It's a paranormal pub call. Of course they looked for Ratman. 
So what is Ratman? Nothing. So allegedly it was one of two things. The mayor's freak child cast away and raised by rats, or a homeless man who took shelter down here and was killed by rats. But then he came back as Ratman. Creepy. This really is the most far-fetched of the lot. A mutant baby raised by rats. Are you hearing yourself? Well, the dead rat ghost is slightly less ridiculous. Seriously, the only thing we're going to spot is copious amounts of graffiti. Any Banksy worthy? Nope. A few phone numbers, presumably for drug dealers. This symbol here has been painted a few times and looks somewhat fresh. Any idea what it is? It looks Mesopotamian at a glance. At a glance? Fudging hell. No mystery where Abigail gets her brains from. Thank you. I can't take all the credit. Her father was Chief Crown Prosecutor. That takes some brains, I guess. Clearly not enough to not be a piece of... Abigail! Well, you sell yourself short, Cheryl. Thank you, James. Do I need to get the spray out? And how long do I need to humour you down here before we can press on to pub number five? Hmm. How long do you reckon, Dan? Half an hour? Dan? 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 Brilliant. Broke the golden seal. Guys? Oh, for the love of... I, I, I was just gone for like... A few minutes? Oh, Jesus Christ. Public urination not exactly fitting look for a decorated officer. Okay, I'm, I'm four down and this is, isn't exactly public. It's basically a sewer. I... Wait. Ugh. Miss Wu? In the flesh. What are you doing here? Have you been following me? I should be asking you the same. What are you doing interrupting my investigation? I asked first. And I did some digging. You aren't a journalist, and you sure as shit aren't the reporter you claimed you were. You got an interview under false pretense. Very unethical. Okay, okay. You got me. I'm not a reporter. I'm a horror blogger. A horror blogger? Why are you looking at me like that? Uh, Nothing. Pray tell, what is your blog called? The Supernatural Truth? Oh, a little ironic, don't you think? Let's not start pointing out dramatic irony, shall we? Look, I have no interest in whatever nonsense you're down here for. I'm celebrating my friend's birthday. Of course, of course. Enjoying your crawl? And how do you know that I'm on a pub crawl? Hmm. You said you were four down. You're celebrating James Hunter's birthday, which is likely paranormal themed. And you're in the South End. I mean, you're not wrong. You wouldn't happen to be doing a horror blog on Evie Barry. Well, you're not wrong either. Are you sure you want to finish pub crawl? To be transported back in time, where it all went wrong? I live that every day. It's hardly anything new. Do you want Abigail seeing more? Excuse me? Miss Corbin of The Haunted Podcast. What do you think she'll see if she goes back? What are you suggesting? Nothing, deputy. Be careful on your crawl. I'd hate to see Mr. Hunter in another terrible accident. Wait, what? Oh, fuck. Miss Wu? Eliza? Abigail? James? Dan? Wait, Abigail, did you see someone come this way? No, where the hell have you been? I just went to take a leak. For 20 minutes? How much did you drink? You could have at least given us a heads up. We were worried about you. I did? Well, none of us heard it. You better not be trying to lamplight us. <sighs> so close. I said, and I quote, Hey guys, I need to bleed the lizard. And then I ducked off. Lovely description. Well, that isn't really a nice way to say, I need to expel urine from my bladder, is there? Right, we've resorted to toilet humour. Shall we just chalk this Ratman excursion up as a failure and head on to pub number five for a nice pint of... Feces! Okay, now who's being gross? No, look! Rat feces! Those are huge! Why are you two suddenly experts in rat feces? Our home in London had a really bad problem with them. Remember when I found them on my sheets? Ugh. We tried all sorts of things, but they always came back. And then one day... They just stopped. Call me crazy, but this seems to be the only area without that strange symbol. Did you get a photo of it, Abigail? 
Of course I did. Fantastic. I'll drop Dr. Backman a call. Let's get out of here. I need signal. And the smell of rat droppings is really starting to give me a headache. Yeah, too right. Hey guys, I just need to weed the lizard. Again? You what? Do you have a bladder the size of a walnut? Um, no. Well, go on then. <laughs> go on what? Go piss. <laughs> Abigail, you are such a lightweight. Four pints down and you're already hearing shit. I'm not! Can you two save this for pub number five, please? Yes, yes. You coming? Yeah, right behind you. Eight more pints. Jesus. Oh, it's not going to kill you. But just be ready for the mother of all hangovers. Way too loud. Need oh, water. Oh, thank God. Where the hell am I? And why am I wearing a backpack? Starring Jamie Evans as James Hunter, Isabella Barbieri as Abigail Corbin and Luke Hunter as Dan Cowell. Also featuring Tess Gustard, Rajni Hall, Edina Hadley, Tony Marden, Lila May, Charles Topping, Shayla Tharp, Benton Hodges, Harleen Sahota, Dean Kilby, Kevin Stemp, Rory Jocelyn, David Anthony Green. Haunted, the audio drama is created by Jamie Evans with all episodes produced and directed by Jamie Evans and Benton Hodges. Audio engineering by Benton Hodges and Jamie Evans. Haunted is a production of Impala Films and is recorded at Free Sprite Media Studios with special thanks to Duncan Newham for equipment support. Opening and closing themes by James Crow. Thank you for listening to this audio presentation. Come back next week for the next exciting chapter of Haunted, the audio drama.